Okay, so given this figure, could you tell me the length of X and that is right here? Well, actually, a lot of you won't be able to answer this because one, you either have forgotten the geometry that you once learned, or two, you never really learned these concepts in the first place. And what we're dealing with here is some very important concepts in geometry, and they're not that difficult. So if you're looking at this problem, you're like, I have no idea what to do. Not a problem. Uh, just stick with me for a couple minutes and you'll be an expert at this. But uh, if you have your answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to thoroughly review the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so just uh, uh, to make sure there's no confusion here, we're looking for this length, length x. Uh, this length right here is 6, this is 6, this is 10. Of course, we have some uh, right triangles going on here. What is the answer? Well, the correct answer, x is equal to 5. All right, now, if you got this right, that is super good. Matter of fact, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional, certified expert in the area of similar triangles and the angle-angle uh, theorem when it comes to similar uh, right triangles. And when you tell your family that, they'll be like, you know what, uh, you know, don't stop telling me all this math stuff. You might like math. You know, I'm not really interested in it. But, you know, it just sounds so impressive to say that anyways. But listen, good job. Now, here's the thing. And all jokes aside, even if you got this answer and you're like, well, I don't even know what you're talking about, Mr. U2 Math Man, AA Theorem and Similarity. Well, uh, this is what we're going to be, you know, emphasizing in this uh, video. Okay. And if you are out there and you're completely lost, well, let's go ahead and get you unlost right now. And uh, let, again, this problem, to solve this problem, we're going to have to know something about similar triangles. So what is a similar triangle? Well, I'm going to show you that in a second. And this is the first thing we need to know that, hey, we're dealing with similar triangles. The second thing is that we need to understand this specific theorem the AA theorem, okay? Now there's probably other ways we can approach this. I'm gonna use this uh, theorem here. AA stands for angle-angle theorem. Now when you study geometry, especially like at the high school level, you learn a ton of theorems and postulates. And if you were ever uh, wondering or if you kind of like, oh yeah, I remember postulates and theorems and probably heard the word before. Um, so what's the difference between a postulate and a theorem? Well, let me just tell you very, very quickly in a very informal way, a postulate, okay, is something that we kind of um, uh, accept on faith. Now, you might be uh, surprised that much of mathematics is based upon uh, faith, okay? In other words, it's almost a philosophical type of uh, discipline where we, uh, some of you might uh, think, oh, you know, Math is so concrete, you know, because one plus one is equal to two. It, there's absolute, you know, proof in the universe, mathematics. Well, no. Uh, the thing with math is we have to uh, develop uh, kind of a system of mathematics. And uh, the kind of those basic, basic concepts uh, or properties, if you will, are called like axioms. And I don't want to go off on too many tangents here, but I am. Axioms and in geometry, a lot of those things are called postulates. So these are uh, basically rules or things that we accept um, on faith, okay, that we cannot prove effectively. Now, a theorem is something we can prove, okay, so theorems can be proved by using other things like namely postulates and other things in mathematics. So that's the difference because you will definitely run across these two words, postulates and uh, theorems and axioms, okay, but just remember, and hopefully this doesn't shock you or make you sad, in any way that, you know, math, you know, is not so 100% absolute. Um, anyways, uh, I'll tell you one other quick thing about mathematics as well, especially in geometry. We have Euclidean uh, uh, geometry, Euclid, okay, Euclidean geometry, and then we have like non-Euclidean geometry. So basically, uh, uh, Euclid 
was one of the most awesome mathematicians there ever was, and he was, you know, like a founding uh, father, if you will, of a lot of the concepts in geometry. But Euclidean geometry is like uh, geometry like on planet Earth, and then when you go to outer space and we take into other considerations like gravity, it gets crazy with non-Euclidean geometry. But, you know, uh, I don't want to go off on too many tangents here because I have to stop myself. But what I want to tell you is that, you know, math is a big, big universe, and not everything is as uh, it appears, okay, in terms of absolutes. All right, but anyways, right here we have similar triangles. Now, if we notice our little uh, figure, we have a triangle right here. Uh, there's one triangle, and then we have this other bigger triangle, and these two triangles are similar triangles. So what is a similar triangle? Well, we need to understand that, and then we need to understand this angle angle theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about similarity. All right, so we're talking about similar triangles, but similarity can apply to any figure. And I love similarity because uh, basically I think of it as the zoom in or zoom out property. Okay, so let's suppose I have this lovely triangle right here and I zoom out and I can make a copy of it and here it is. Okay, so here is my kind of bigger copy of this little small triangle. Or I could think of it this way. I have this big old triangle and I'm going to zoom uh, in and I want to make myself a, a smaller copy of that triangle. Either way, these are basically the, uh, the same triangle. The only difference is they have uh, different, they're different size. Okay. Well, this is the concept of similarity and it doesn't, it could be anything. It could be a, uh, other uh, figures, you know, that we can zoom in or zoom out. So it's not, st not just triangles, but in geometry, the notation for similarity is this uh, little squiggly thing right here. Okay. And that's not to be confused with congruency, okay, which is a totally different deal. Uh, congruent figures have the exact same uh, shape and size, okay? So in uh, similar figures, they have uh, the same shape, but not the same size. Okay, so that is what a similar uh, figure is. And of course, we're talking about similar triangles. Now, here is the big, big thing that we need for this particular um, problem is that when you have similar figures, okay, uh, you can compare any two sides, okay, and those uh, sides will be in proportion to one another, okay? And this is gonna be the key to doing this problem. We're gonna set up a proportion. So if I compare this side to this side, okay, that is going to be in proportion to this side to this side, okay? So uh, uh, corresponding sides are in proportion when it comes to similar Figures. Now, I don't want to turn this into a complete full geometry course and geometry lesson, although I've kind of already went off on too many crazy tangents, but hopefully you're still with me. Like, you know, I find it kind of interesting, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know. Uh, but listen, uh, again, a lot to uh, try to teach in a small period of time. But hopefully you understand what similar figures are and similar triangles are. And the key, again, is that we could set up a proportion to um, uh, solve similar figure problems, and that's what we're going to be doing uh, next. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already uh, done so. Okay, now by you doing this, it really does help me. But my goal is to help others. Okay, I want to find people like yourself that are interested in math or need help in mathematics, and the only way I can kind of grow my YouTube classroom uh, bigger is by the algorithm saying, hey, you know what? People uh, don't mind listening to this guy ramble about math. So by you subscribing, it does help me out. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Now, a lot of people reach out to me, okay? And I'm very grateful for all of you that watch my uh, content. But a lot of folks are interested in kind of uh, going back and doing another uh, trip through the wonderful world of mathematics, kind of in a more formal way. So I've gotten so many of these requests, uh, I've just decided to build a special, lovely custom course for you. And I call this course my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find a link to it in the description below. But basically, uh, this is a uh, perfect course for those of you who want to kind of reconnect with all those forgotten math skills that you worked so hard to learn. Or maybe you uh, just didn't feel good about your math education way back at school 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. You know, maybe you had a couple... 
uh, teachers that didn't really inspire you or teach you well enough. But uh, this would be the perfect course to kind of rebuild or learn for the first time critical math skills. But anyways, in this course, you'll start off with arithmetic, basic mathematics, and then you're going to learn a ton of algebra and geometry to include uh, the concepts that we're uh, using in this uh, particular problem. You're also going to learn some basic trigonometry and basic probability and statistics. So not only is this just going to be great, you know, uh, you know, in terms of relearning math, but this is like a lot of practical kind of math skills that you can employ in various uh, parts of your life as well. All right, so thanks for listening to my little commercial here, and let's go ahead and move on to finishing this problem up. All right, so here is our problem, okay? So the first thing we need to understand is that we're dealing with similar triangles. We're dealing with similar figures. So as I indicated, we have a triangle here and we have a triangle here. But what makes uh, two triangles similar? Well, there's different theorems, okay, that we can use. But effectively, remember, uh, a, a similar figures or similar triangles um, have the same shape but different sizes. So if they have the same angles, okay, then the, i.e. they have the same uh, shape, okay? So we can kind of establish that uh, these two triangles right here have the same angles, okay? Then we can kind of conclude that they are similar triangles, and then we can uh, find uh, what this value is x by using or setting up a proportion, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this AA theorem, and that basically uh, states that if two angles of a triangle are the same, then the, uh, uh, the triangles are similar. So let's focus in on the small triangle right here. And let's uh, notice we have a right triangle and we have this angle, right? This angle is part of this small triangle. Okay, so it's uh, 90 degrees here and whatever this angle is, that's the angle. Now let's go ahead and keep this angle in focus right here and use that angle as part of the big ang uh, triangle, right? But we also have another 90 degrees down here, okay, in the bigger triangle with this same angle. So you can see that both of these uh, triangles are sharing the same angle, right? This angle up on top is the same for both the bigger and the smaller triangle. So this is the same angle, and they're both right angles, 90 degrees. Therefore, okay, this angle right here is the same. Okay, so these uh, triangles have the exact same angles. Uh, that means that they have the uh, exact same shape, i.e. they are similar. All right, so we're very happy to know that. Again, we can uh, prove that by using the angle, uh, angle, angle uh, theorem. Now, by the way, uh, some of you that uh, may remember back in high school level geometry, you actually have to prove stuff. And that's a big thing in mathematics. That's all I did when I was uh, studying theoretical mathematics is uh, the concept of proof. So oftentimes you'll, you'll see problems prove these two triangles are similar and then you'll have to walk through that. That's a whole nother kind of deal. If you're interested in that level of geometry, I'll leave links to my full geometry course uh, in the description as well. Uh, that really kind of gets into more heavy duty geometry. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So these are uh, similar triangles. In other words, we could make a comparison to the sides. Now there's different ways we can do this, but let's uh, kind of do it this way. This side, okay, this length, if I take that length and I divide it by this length, it's the same or equal to me taking this length and dividing it by this length. And what, uh, what I want to do is set up a proportion here so I can solve for x. So I'm going to say 6 is 2x, and that's going to be equal to as 12 is to 10. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up right now. So we're just going to make a comparison of the same side. So I'm going to take this side divided by this side, and whatever that answer is, it's going to be equal to this side divided by this size, this side, and this is what we call a proportion in uh, mathematics, two equal fractions, and we use algebra and proportions to solve a ton of geometry problems. Okay, so right now, if you understand the setup, the algebra is going to be very easy. So to solve a proportion, all we need to do is use the cross product. Remember, a proportion is two equal fractions. If I have the fraction one half is equal to four over eight, those fractions are equal, okay? Well, if you notice here, if I go uh, crosswise, uh, multiply crosswise, i.e. the cross product, 1 times 8 is 8, and 2 times 4 is 8. Therefore, the cross product is equal. 
So I'm saying, hey, I got one fraction equal to another, another fraction. Let's go ahead and apply the cross product. So I uh, have uh, 12 times x, which of course would be 12x, and 6 times 10, which of course would be 60. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 12. 60 divided by 12 is 5. x is equal to 5. Okay, so that is the answer. And uh, this is a pretty standard, uh, not too difficult of a geometry problem for those of you that are actually wanting to uh, study geometry. But uh, again, just one last thing about math, re, uh, math skills rebuilder course. I do uh, go over similar uh, congruency, these uh, big concepts. And you know, you don't have to go really into the real big details of proving things. That's kind of a higher level, but you should have some kind of sense of similar figures, you know, uh, congruent figures, you know, cause this can come up in all kinds of uh, uh, different situations, but hopefully uh, you're walking away from this video going, you know what, that wasn't too bad. All this, uh, this YouTube math man, he does like to ramble and go off on these crazy uh, tangents. You know, hopefully you find some of it kind of interesting, but um, uh, more importantly, hopefully you're inspired to learn more math. Okay, cause if you are, then I did my job. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.